Thank you guys for watching the Rhinox Energy channel. I'm your host, Adrian. And just a quick update video here, just to update everybody on what's going on with the system so far. And to thank everybody that's been watching and liking and sharing and commenting the, the content so far. I greatly appreciate it for everyone that's done so, so far. Just wanna say a quick shout out to all of the subscribers that have subscribed so far. I got a Lemetric Tom clock and it has a subscriber account. So whenever you guys subscribe, it actually comes to that clock and me and my daughter have a good time. We have to play a little fun little game with it. You know, checking it each day. Did your subscribers go up? No, yes. Uh, so definitely, uh, we've been having a good go at that so far. Drop a comment, tell me how good or bad I'm doing. I greatly appreciate you guys as always. So let's get into the video. So I just wanna do a quick breakdown or a quick update of what's been happening so far. We put the system online on around about May 27th. That was the initial uh, start date of the system. After getting all the pieces up to this point, getting them installed, having an electrician come out, putting the uh, battery rack together. And I had I had two batteries to start. So I had 10 kilowatt hours worth of power to start off. I had about, I wanna say about four to six panels at that point. I went with the Hyperion panels and I, I've shown over time how I've added more. We, we've gotten up to having a ground mount outside of 10 panels. I got one extra panel that I can't seem to get rid of, but I'm gonna keep that. We're gonna use it later. That's, that's, what, that's what all good hoarders say. We're gonna use it later. <laughs> but so far we have produced 1.3 megawatts. That's a lot of power. Um, in the big scheme of things, it's not as much power as you would um, maybe maybe hope hope to use, but it's a small win for somebody who's just started their system. And I primarily use my system to charge my Jeep. So I have a Wrangler 4xe hybrid Jeep. It has a 17 kilowatt hour battery inside of it, which allows me to go up to 28 miles per charge. Uh, along the way in the Jeep, back and forth. Just to give a quick update, so, so far I've driven about 2,150 miles in the Jeep for free. I'm saying I've driven 2,000 miles, over 2,150 miles for free in the Jeep, just with this setup. Now I have a small system. Now what that allows me to do getting 28 miles per full charge each time 17 kilowatt hours day after day that allows me to supplement my my drives to work every day so instead of driving 300 miles on gas i'm driving 100 miles each day i go to nashville three times a week instead of driving 300 miles on gas now i drive 210 miles on gas roughly let's give or take so with that being said my overall savings so far has been $280. So now you say, well, that's not a not a whole whole lot compared to what you what you put the system, what you spent on the system. You would be correct. Yes, it's not a whole lot. But in a big scheme of things, once we get more batteries, once we get more solar, and we're able to transition to putting the HVAC onto the system, then then the savings really start to come in. But up until this point, I've saved about $280 in electric range only. Now I still charge all my tools. I charge electric scooters for the, for the kids going to school every day. Um, I charge all my power tools, Milwaukee stuff, like my drone, my camera, camera batteries. Um, I charge everything down in the garage right off solar in those eco-worthy batteries. What are some issues with the battery system so far? And this is probably a question that's probably gonna come up time after time because you see a lot of things online that say, hey, well, you bought an ego-worthy battery, you bought, you didn't buy a Battleborn or you didn't buy a really, very pricey battery. Now I did go with the EG4 inverter, the EG4 12 kPV. I didn't go with their batteries because by the time I paid for their batteries, I'm almost, I'm almost buying two batteries of the Eco-Worthy. 
So it, it's a give or take at this point. Um, so I'm, I've been happy with what I've had so far, but the only issue that I've had so far out of anything is the heat. Sometimes now the, now I've been running a fan. I've connected a fan in the garage and it's been running for the last month and a half since I've, I've really had the system going and I, I started to hear the fans kick up on the inverter here and there charging the Jeep. So, but I've had a fan running for day and night, 24 hours for the last two months almost. I kind of want to put that into perspective because when I say these, this system is a workhorse, it's, it's running everything down there. It literally is running everything down there. The fan is running nonstop. I don't change the settings on low, but I could put it on high. It drains the battery, maybe a couple percentages every night. And I just do that to have a constant draw on the batteries, just so they don't, they're not charging all the way up and then just kind of sitting there. I, I like to keep the system working as, as much as possible. So currently as constructed, I don't have enough power to switch over the AC unit so far. It's a four ton AC unit, so I don't have enough power to switch that over just yet, but that's ultimately the main goal. And I'm pretty sure once that happens, I might get a call from my, my electric provider and they're gonna be wondering why I'm not using as many kilowatts per month and that's probably be a good thing. So what's next for the channel? Um, so I would like to do some live streams, maybe Friday night, Saturday night, somewhere like around there on Sundays. Go over some topics around the world of electric uh, as far as cars, energy, production, solar, a lot of things are changing. We got the big, beautiful bill. And as you know, the EV tax credits are going away in September. That's gonna be a thing. So I don't have a full EV yet, but that was on the horizon. That's something I definitely want. So now you take away the $7,500 of a tax credit. It does give less of an incentive to get a full EV, but for somebody like me who has, who's, who's currently building a system to power the EV, itself for free for a lifetime then it's not going to deter me because i'm eventually going to get one and we're going to save even more money and it's not even going to be an issue also i am going to be adding another battery really soon here as you know EcoWorthy changed their batteries from version 2 to version 3. so i have ordered a version 3 battery we got one on the way it should be here any day now by the time you see this video, that video is probably right up next. So we're just going to install it. We're going to put it in and we'll have 20 kilowatt hours worth the, worth the power in the same storage unit here. So over time, we're going to build this array and we'll build this battery bank up to 10 batteries. That's the goal. The goal is 10 batteries, five kilowatts each, 50 kilowatt battery storage that's the goal the issue is if you're not someone who's flush with cash and you're just working your nine to five totally okay take your time these these things take time and, and while you're going along the way make sure you're working out the kinks there's still some things i haven't done with my systems even i've had a runner for two months it's running but i haven't put my wires in pvc pipe that's just something I haven't done. I have not ran conduit on the outside of my house to show, to put my PV wires in, even though they're, they're weather sealed and they're weather rated and it really has not really much effect on it, but it is something I wanna do for aesthetics. But there's there's things you, you will be doing along this process. It's not, a, it's not something you would just put in one day and you set it and forget it type of thing is it does not work that way now solar does but as far as when you want to improve your system and you want to continue to keep it efficient and running there's there's certain things you, you want to do and check on daily heat dissipation making sure your wires aren't corroding uh, making sure everything is running properly you want to check on these things all the time so our next thing is to we're going to add another battery we're going to add 10 more panels uh, we're going to take it from a 3.6 kilowatt system uh all the way up to a about an eight kilowatt system 
somewhere around there. We're gonna have we're gonna have 2,400 watt bifacial panels up to 500 each, and I'm using the Hyperion panels, which I've shown in previous videos. I'll put it up on the screen there. Too. Uh, yeah, it, it could be anywhere. It it gets pretty pretty pricey there, um, but we want to have 20 panels, and that that should take it to an either eight kilowatt system. Obviously, you're not getting the full benefit of it all the time, but it is by facial, so you could be getting 450, 420, 480, who knows, with a, with a possibility of being a 10,000 watt kilowatt system. And at that point, when we add the 10 more panels, that's when I wanna come back, and then we're gonna put the HVAC on there. So because that's a 40, it's a 40 amp circuit breaker on an 80 amp system, so I, I think I can get it on there and then still power my EV to charge as well. So that's the next step. One other thing that has been mentioned that I do maybe wanna try, I'm gonna run a Tesla for a weekend and I'm gonna actually bring it back. We're gonna do some reviews on the Tesla. It's probably gonna be a Model 3. The Model Ys are just, they're just so expensive to rent. So you're looking, I mean, and I'm near Nashville. Um, so it's about a 40 minute drive from Nashville, give or take. Um, but having it, I want to do, I do want to rent it for a weekend and, and see how it drives, see what the charging is like. Um, once we do get the 10 more panels and we are able to supplement the amount of power we're producing right now. That is the, the near future goal here. But Tesla, when I look around at EVs, um, Tesla is not the king anymore. Chevy is definitely gang on them. The Equinox EV looks amazing. Um, I can't say that enough. I wish Volkswagen would bring the ID every one over here, uh, but they're not gonna bring it to the US. Uh, probably not, it's gonna be an Australian, European car, which is totally fine, but it kind of sucks for us as consumers. We want more choices. The Nissan Leaf is coming out next year. The sky's the limit right now. Ford is bringing out their cars. The Chevy Bolt 2026 is coming out next year. There's a lot of cars that are coming out that I have my eye on that I want to look at, take a closer look before I just say, hey, I'm going to go and get a Tesla Model 3. I may not want the Tesla Model 3 after I see the deals that Chevy is bringing the 2026 Bolt. I don't know. Um, do I want to pay? I already have the Jeep Wrangler. It's a four by E. I got a note on that. And that's just me being transparent with you guys. I pay about $600 a month on that. So I am going to pay that off early, but I don't want to have two huge notes worth of cars. So that, that comes into a factor too. I don't want to overburden myself with cars. Cars are the worst investment as it is, but you gotta get around. And I don't wanna, I'd rather put free miles on an EV rather than putting them all on my Jeep Wrangler, which I plan to keep for the rest of my life. I just wanna say thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for commenting and liking the videos. I greatly appreciate you guys. I never would have thought that starting down this journey would have been so much interest from just the public of doing this. Um, eventually, I would love to have a homestead, love to live off grid. Currently, not in a position to do that. My daughter in school, uh, seventh grade. So you just you just can't make those decisions rashly. So you have to have to kind of move as a family, as a unit, and make those decisions as they come. But one day, that is the ultimate goal: is to live off grid and to have a hundred percent just all battery um, and solar production for all of my needs, um, daily needs, that is. That's definitely the goal. But until that point, you guys can contact me on YouTube. Uh, you can contact me on, I'm not on Instagram. Instagram banned my other account uh, for the AI glitch and I'm not starting up another Instagram account, but you can go to my Facebook page. You can contact me by email, contact at rhinoxenergy.com. And if anybody wants to sponsor these videos or send free, free things for me to try on the system, or if you have any idea of what I should try, definitely please reach out, leave a comment and, or send an email 
and I will definitely respond and get back to you. But that's been my time. I appreciate you guys for watching the channel. Thank you guys. And as always, we are going to live free or we're going to die trying. I'm out.